Let's have a look at a couple of examples from section 5.6, beginning with exercise 8. So the instructions here are to use iteration to find an explicit formula for this sequence. And the sequence, uh, the recurrence relation that we're given is f sub k equals f sub k minus 1 plus 2 to the k for all integers k greater than or equal to 2. And we've got the initial condition that f sub 1 is equal to 1. Okay, so the idea with iteration is you want to go through and generate a few terms and not necessarily simplify the expression. You want to, your goal is to look for a pattern. And so sometimes uh, leaving it unsimplified or at least not writing it as a number um, is going to be helpful in order to see what that pattern is. So, so we've got f sub 1 is equal to 1. f sub 2, according to that recurrence relation, would be 1 plus 2 squared. f sub 3 then would take that and add 2 cubed to it. So we'd have 1 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed. So notice each time we're adding a power of 2. And the power of 2 that we're adding is determined by that index k. So f sub 4 then would take that expression and add 2 to the 4th to it. So based on this, we can see that you know, each time we're adding a power of 2. So if we wanted to write down what f sub n would be, well, based on what we've seen, uh, it mu must be 1 plus 2 squared plus 2 cubed plus 2 to the 4th, all the way up to 2 to the n which would have been the last power of 2 that we added to get that term. Okay, now, leaving it in this form is not really the best, um, the best way to write an explicit formula because we don't like to have the, this, you know, ellipses in the middle, um, you know, this could be, you know, uh, many terms, depending on what n is. And we can really simplify this by using our formula for the sum of a geometric sequence. Now, this is not quite as written, not quite a geometric sequence, because notice it goes from 1 to 2 squared, then 2 cubed, 2 to the fourth. So we've got all these powers of 2, but we skip 2 to the first power. But that's not really a problem. Um, so we could handle that in a couple different ways. We could look at this as 1 plus a geometric sequence that starts with 2 squared. Or we could just look at this as the geometric sequence, um, the sum of the geometric sequence that starts with 1 2, 2 squared, 2 cubed, and then just subtract 2 at the end for that missing term. Okay, so we've got f sub n equals, now I'm, that's where that sum of a geometric sequence formula is used there, 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 over 2 minus 1, and then from that whole thing we're subtracting 2 to account for that missing term. Okay, we can do a little better than that, though, because we're dividing by 2 minus 1, which is just 1. So we can simplify this nicely to f sub n is equal to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 3. And you can check for yourself by going back and looking at those terms we generated that this explicit formula would give us the same values as we're getting through iteration. Okay, um, so this way with this explicit formula, if we wanted to know what f sub 20 is, we could do that without having to generate all of the terms up to that term. All right, let's move on to the next example.
which is exercise 22. This says if a bank pays interest at a rate of I compounded M times a year, then the amount of money P sub K at the end of K time periods, where one time period is one nth of a year, satisfies the recurrence relation P sub K equals 1 plus I over M times P sub K minus 1 with the initial condition that P sub zero or P naught is the initial amount deposited. Okay, so just to briefly explain this recurrence relation, it's just saying to get from the, the balance at the end of one period, you multiply a certain factor by the previous period, that's going to account for the, the interest that you've gained. And the interest is based on how much you had at the beginning of that period. Uh, and so you know, that explains our recurrence relation and how we're getting one balance based on the balance um, previous to that. But we want an explicit formula through iteration. So we're going to do something very similar to the previous example. We'll start with our uh, P sub 1 we would get by multiplying that factor by P sub 0, which is the initial amount deposited. P sub 2, would we multiply by that factor again. So notice that results in an exponent increasing by 1. And likewise, P sub 3, we would have that factor to the third power times the initial deposited amount. Okay, so each time we're multiplying a factor by the previous term, and so if we go further down the sequence, what we're seeing is that every time that we increase the index by 1, we're increasing that exponent by 1. So that tells us that P sub n is that factor 1 plus i over m raised to the nth power times the initial amount deposited. Okay, so, uh, and you might be familiar with that formula, you know, even outside of the context of this class, you know, um, it's, it's a pretty well-known formula for compound interest. But this is just looking at it in perhaps a, a context that you may not have seen it before, which is in the context of uh, recurrence relation. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one.